Okay, good to know. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We want to welcome you to our Presidio sales meeting. This is uh, on Zoom as well as live here in our Pleasant Grove office. Uh, we always start with our wants and needs. Anybody have any buyers or sellers they want to talk about? Any open houses, anything going on? Online, you can just unmute and talk. My y'all go quiet. No business going on, huh? Uh, how about celebrations or gratitudes? Anything happening? And it's today or tomorrow you'll die. Yeah, yeah. It's takes a couple of days. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Okay, moving on then to our broker moment. Um, and think about this, if you haven't already, unrepresented buyers believe that they can receive the BAC off of the price of the home. Have you ever come across that? They're like, we don't have an agent, so we want the seller to reduce the price because you're not having to pay, pay a commission. Really, that's not the correct thinking, is it? It says here in our listing agreement that the company is authorized to share the brokerage fee as advertised on the MLS with another brokerage participating in any transaction arising out of the listing agreement, right? It does not say that we are authorized to remove or reduce the sale price and neither is the seller technically, right? They don't have to do that, do they? So make sure you're having that educating conversation with your client. About that, Rob, do you have any other comments on that? Yeah, one the one more thing that kind of dovetails off this is what if an attorney it writes up a contract um, who's not licensed, they're not a real estate agent, and they're asking for the commission? Can they get paid? An attorney, yeah. contract. No. So the compensation is being offered on the B as the BAC, and they get paid. No, they are not. They are not a licensed real estate agent. If they want to get paid for legal services, they can get paid for legal services, but they cannot get paid for real estate commissions. They're not licensed to be able to do that. So, so don't. I've had attorneys allow them. I can get paid. They cannot get paid for that. So right. Don't let them think otherwise. They have to be a real estate attorney. Okay, moving on. Um, Presidio education coming up this week. Uh, we have, or this is next week. So we have uh, four, five, six hours of CE. If you need CE, there's uh, no excuses to not jump online and be able to take these classes, okay? Water law rights and transfers is one that's always educational that people don't seem to know enough about. So if you jump on that class on Thursday, uh, it's one hour core. All right. All right. And we want to celebrate and congratulate last week's closers. We had 30 closings last week. So if your name's on this list, congratulations. Keep up the good work. If your name's not, keep working on it. Get on next week's. All right, announcements. We have Ninja coming up, right? So early bird pricing ends May 15th. If you don't know what Ninja is, you're not reading your emails, you're not looking at your social media because we're putting it out there every meeting and every time. So it is a four day class that really goes deep dive into your sphere of influence on how to work them and actually on how to um, work on yourself too, on your self help. So help you build confidence in yourself. Please look into this because I'm getting a lot of questions. People asking me, you know, how do you generate business? How can I regenerate? How do I, how do I create ways to increase what I'm doing? Don't look at this 850. That will be made up so fast if you do not enroll in this. I mean, sorry, when you enroll in this. <laughs> but this is an incredible opportunity for you to increase your own skill set because that's what it's coming down to is your ability to be able to communicate and sell yourself on what is driving your business. So please get enrolled in this and be a great opportunity for you. All right. Then we have our spring party coming up. You want to come up and talk about that? 
introduce yourself to. There's some new people. Hello, I'm Courtney, for those of you that don't know me. Um, so Friday, it is this Friday here at the office at 11. We are having um, a lady named Monica. She works with Cactus and Tropics down in Sandy. Um, she'll come teach us about gardening, how to start a vegetable garden. She's gonna bring you some little seeds. And then um, we have some cute little vases with some flowers that we're gonna put together for springtime. So come and learn if you want to learn either about gardening, how to garden, get some new tips and tricks. Um, come and then lunch is provided by Adam with Ibex. So come and have a good time. Thanks. All right, thanks Courtney. So that's our fun Friday event for this branch and anybody can also come and participate. Okay, um, all right, we talked about Ninja Sally. You wanna come back up and talk about rodeo night? All right, get your steps in. Hey, I know. If you're any, if you're very familiar with Strawberry Days and the rodeo, it will sell out very fast. So I need you guys to register for this one as soon as possible because if we can only get so many tickets, we will only get so many tickets. One agent, um, one ticket per agent. If you want to bring your family. This code right here, you can just scan it really quick. It takes you right to the Strawberry Day Rodeo website and you can actually just get your tickets right there. We are sitting on the west side, I believe J through K. It's kind of in that curved section. So if you wanna get your family there, we'll probably be in the top couple of rows. So if you have any questions, shoot me a text, email me, whatever you need, but I will have that register link. Don't leave yet. Okay, and tell them all about we're cutting strawberries and stuff like that. It says Saturday, June 17th. Yeah, we go for the Saturday show. Friday is super busy, but Friday, don't think I'm going to count Friday out. We're going to be slicing strawberries. Oh. So we're going to be volunteering and showing the community kind of what Presidio is. We also will be doing a lot more volunteer opportunities with Presidio, but they allow the community to come in during um, rodeo nights and actually slice and top strawberries and hand them out. So we'll be setting up a volunteer kind of thing for that as well. So more details will come with this one as time goes on. We just want you to get registered so we know how many tickets to plan for. That's the most important thing. Thank you. You're welcome. So I hear uh, Jen tells me that um, slicing strawberries is a good time. I hate strawberries. And I don't. So You're that's not an excuse. Nope. He's coming. I'm, I will drag him. So I don't know if I don't know. have to either. Sorry, you wear gloves, Kate. All right. So I'm going to go as well. See, I hate strawberries. So we're going to do it. Have you ever right. I hope not ever. We're going to make it a plan to have the strawberries and cream. If you haven't had it, it's a, it's a pleasant growth staple. So. It does. It tells a lot about my personality. <laughs> yeah, I do not like strawberries. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. Is Ibex online? Nope. Elevates. Look at that energy. You have 30 seconds. Go. I'm filling in 30 seconds. Okay, I have two things today. So we obviously provide you with the most comprehensive home warranty coverage in Utah, but we have two really cool things going on um, this week or this next week. Corey is doing a lunch. I don't know if you guys have ever been, Courtney. I've never been there. You, but you haven't ever been here, but you went to around the one night. So they're super fun. We, you, we pay for your lunch. You guys come and hang out. This one is at Thai Cuisine, um, Thai House Cuisine in Pleasant Grove. So really close to you guys on Monday, April 24th at 1130. So if you guys want to come and do that, um, we'll pay for your lunch. Just come and hang out. It's super, super relaxed. Just hang out. 1130. So, um, and then one more thing that we're doing is we're doing a Traeger giveaway this month. Um, Rob looks like he smokes meat. So hopefully you win. I'll put in a good word for you. Um, but you go to elevatehw.com slash giveaway, and then you can enter to win a Traeger this month. It's our giveaway we do every month. So that's it for me. Thank you. All right. I don't think OBO's online. OBO. I can't remember who you're with. Sorry. Who are you with? Oh, Your thanks. traveling title. See, I can't even remember. Come on up next. Hey. You know how many people I yeah, talk to you daily? My traveling title. All right. I, I've met some of you, but it's glad to be here. Uh, we're trying to come more often. Uh, like our name says, traveling title. We'll travel to your clients. That includes after hours, weekends. Um, it's all kind of part of the closing costs. The only time we might charge a notary fee is if your clients maybe out of state and we have to get a mobile notary out there but um we're you know your full typical full service tile company but you know i just, I'll just want to emphasize that traveling tile part that's all part. Yeah, I'm friendly. 
friendly, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, that's good. good. Thanks, Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Yep. Try to remember you next time. <laughs> yeah. All right, first colony, come on up. Quiet. Is it hot in here? You guys got the heat it's on? Really hot. Can you turn that off right there by you? Um, oh, I don't really have a lot of good news. It's a friendly reminder. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying, but the Fed keeps working against me. So it makes it hard for me to have a lot of good news. Yeah. Um, so just a friendly reminder, if you have self-employed clients or borrowers that uh, got pre-qualified a month or two ago, make sure that they are resubmitting their 2022 tax information. We just hit our tax deadline this last week. That was a really fun day for a lot of us. Um, but now we are required to submit 2022 tax returns or proof of an extension. So just make sure that your borrowers are still qualified, that the numbers are still the same, because income obviously can change based upon what kind of year you had last year. So. Mm, thanks. And let them know. Security National. These are our two preferred vendors for mortgage. Yeah. Hey, just uh, talking about how we can help you with your listings. We do a website and a flyer that has a bunch of information. If you guys want to scan right there, it takes you to the website. So I'll pass it around where everybody scan that. It takes it to the website. But it's really nice because we have all these flyers you can put out about cost of living, income, rent versus own, and um, taxes. She was got here talking about. So ditto to everything she said as well. If you have any questions on this, give me a call. Come see me. I'll put it out on the table too. All right. So. Thank you so much. Okay. Do we have anybody online that I haven't, that I've skipped? Speak up now. Nope. Okay. Time's up. All right. We are happy to have our own Ryan Peterson. He's going to teach our class today entitled Shut Up and Listen. So, and no, I did not come up with that title. Although I'd like it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Let's. Let's stop sharing. Okay, it's all yours, Ryan. Thanks. You want to tell about what it's about? Yeah. So how many of you here have ever wanted to or have told someone to, in other words, shut up and listen? Right, right. How many of you have children here? How many times have you wanted to tell your child to be quiet and listen? How many have you done it? Okay. Let me just open this up really quick. Make sure it's actually sharing the screen. Okay, who here would mind reading the definition of listen? Anyone? Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Give one's attention to a sound. Eventually, he was not listening. If, if I've had a stressful day, I love to chill out and listen to music. Synonyms here, pay attention to, attentive, attend, concentrate on, concentrate on hearing, give here to, lend to an ear to, Hang on, someone's so hang on to someone's words. Keep one's ears open. Brick, brick <laughs> up one's ears. Yeah. Be all ears in or be all ears in back one's ear. Get aloud of tune in. Hark, hearken. Yes. Okay. So when we have those experiences, how many of you have had an experience where you've been told to shut up and listen? Okay. What was it that you heard from that person? Okay. Okay. What was communicated to you? Okay. Anger. Yep. So did they say, I'm angry? Shut up and listen. No. Basically, hand in the face. Yeah. Yes. Body language. Yep. Body language is a big thing. Rob brought this up earlier. We have, well, all of us here are very good agents. What's the number one thing that you have to be able to do? 
to be a good agent. It's only one thing. You have to listen. You have to listen. Yep. Well, there's there's a word that I'm looking for. It starts with a C. You have to communicate, right? So what's really being said when someone says, shut up and listen to me? They're not feeling hurt. They're not feeling hurt. Could be, yeah. What do they what does listening really mean? We know what the definition is, but what does in this context, what does it mean? What are they meaning by listening? Okay. Feel is a key word. Understood. Yes, they want to be understood. But who here has ever spoken with a very literal person? Okay. When they talk to you, if a very literal person says, hey, shut up and listen to me, and then they proceed to tell you something, what is it that they mean? What is it that their intentions are? Just the facts. They literally want you to listen to the words being spoken, right? And they're going to use very defining words, and they're going to want you to understand what they're saying by what they say. How many, how many people would say you're a very literal person in here? How many people would say you run into a very literal person regularly? How often would you say? Every day, once a week, once a month? I would say, personally, I only run into a literal person probably whenever I see my brother. He's the most literal person I've ever met. Like borderline Asperger's. Like, like what's, when he communicates to me? Here's yeah. An example. Yes. Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory. Very literal, no emotions, right? The rest of the world, though, wants to communicate with emotion, not the words being said, okay? So a lot of times, for example, these are my little girls. I've said, hey, you need to be quiet and listen to me. You need to be quiet, stop talking, you need to go in the backyard and scoop up the dog poop. You need to go to your room, clean your room. Now, who, who has, so everyone who's said they've had kids in here. What happens when you tell a three or four-year-old to be quiet, listen, go clean up your room? What do they do? They whine, cry. Yep. Yep. What, how, how do they complete the task? Being told numerous times. Okay. Being told numerous times. But what are you saying numerous times to them? To clean their room, right? So I have learned this as my kids when I tell them to do stuff like this, they go and they complete the task. Have you ever had them go do the task? They come back, they're super happy. They're done, right? And you walk into their room and it's not clean, right? But they're so happy, they're done. In their minds, they clean their room. But I assumed that they understood what I meant by them cleaning their room. You have two different expectations of clean. Exactly. That's good. Yep. When I told them to be quiet and listen to me, I basically was asking them to read my mind. Okay. Let's see here. Have you guys ever had a client tell you you're not listening to them? Mm -hmm. I really early on I did. I've had it happen to me where a client's been like, hey, I just don't think you understand what I'm what I'm looking. I don't think you understand what I want. Okay. And this is where we have to turn it around, right? Because a lot of times we get into our scripts, right? We're talking with people, we're communicating with them, but we are not actually listening to them. Okay. So when others ask you, 
to hear them, really, they're asking you to fill an emotion, fill their emotion. How many of you feel like you're good at listening to others? Okay. How many of you feel like you are good at dealing with emotional people? Okay. I would say, I'm depending on the situation, I can be good at it. But it's a lot harder than I think a lot of us realize. So I want to show you this clip really quick. Riley can't be done with me. Hey, it's gonna be okay. We can fix this. We just need to get back to headquarters. Which way to the train station? We have a whole trip planned for us. Hey, who's ticklish, huh? Here comes the tickle monster. Hey, Bing Bong, look at this. Oh, here's a fun game. You point to the train station and we all go there. Won't that be fun? Come on, let's go to the train station. I'm sorry they took your rocket. They took something that you loved. It's gone forever. Sadness, don't make him feel worse. Sorry, it's all I had left of Riley. I bet you and Riley had great adventures. Oh. They were wonderful. Once we flew back in time, we had breakfast twice that day. Sadness! It sounds amazing. I bet Riley liked it. Oh, she did. We were best friends. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. <laughs> I'm okay now. The train station is this way. Missed calls means lost business. Specialty answering service, 800 208. I mean to sum up that. Yeah, so. Let's see here. If it will get out of the screen. So. In that video, what I like, so have any of you seen that movie? I've seen it, right? Um, the elephant, he's sad. He's an imaginary friend and or the person's forgetting about her. And so all the things about the imaginary friend is getting deleted, essentially, okay? Getting thrown away. Well, you have, I can't remember the the main character's person or her name, but she goes, realizes something sad's happening and she gets in his face, right? It's like, hey, it's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Joy. Joy, that's right, joy. I thought it was like, it's like happiness, it's joy. But Joy's trying to change the way he feels by just completely discounting what's happening, right? And we do this with our clients all the time, right? And then sadness comes up and empathizes with the imaginary friend, okay? And what's interesting is joy is kind of upset with sadness. Like you see joy being upset with sadness because she doesn't want sadness to make him sad. But he's already sad, right? So one of the biggest things I've learned in my business is how to listen and communicate it. I right? Joy tried to skip a step. Yeah. And often two times we try to do that, right? We have a client really excited about a property. They saw the pictures. They're pumped about it. 
we go in, walk into the property. They love it. We put an offer on it. They don't get it. We got outbid by six, $60,000, right? 60,000 people. And we call, we call our client and we say, hey, we didn't get that one. When do you want to go see homes? Oh. Right? We totally negate the emotion they're going to feel right then and there, right? If we can't feel, if we can't do business with feeling, it's going to be really hard to establish a base in our, in, in our business. Or you will constantly be hunting. Who feels like they have a really large SOI? Like, my SOI is pretty big. How often do you communicate with your SOI? Okay, how many of you feel like you do a lot of business? Right? What did you say? How, how many of you feel like you do a lot of business? How many feel like you work in your business a lot? Like how many feel like you're prospecting regularly? How many feel like you're working on your business? So really quick, let's talk about that. I always say working in your business is prospecting. Working on your business is working on your, your calendar. That's the best way to put it. Or I'm going to create a new document. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and that, right? Who here is closed more than 10 deals this year? Who here is closed more than six deals this year? It's okay, raise your hand. You're shaking your head yes. So, do you feel that you have a large SOI? Significant SOI, yes. Okay. But it, it could be dialed in. So this here is what's taught me how to build my SOI, connecting with people, right? And it's something that's been really hard for me because I don't do that. I'm not that kind of person. In fact, a lot of times people meet me and then I start talking to them. They're like, oh, I didn't expect that from you, right? And I know there's things I could do. I could probably shave. That'd probably help. There's some things I could do to give a softer approach. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> but I can also be me and be someone who cares about. Right. And this is how we do it. Who here? Well, I'm just going to ask you, what's, sorry, what's your name? Kathleen. So Kathleen, how many deals do you feel like you get on average a year from your SOI without they just call you up and they're like, hey, so-and-so, I got a referral for you. 15. 15. Who here would like to have 15 deals given to them every single year? Right? I'll say, I'll tell you right now, it's probably because you do this to a certain extent with your SOI. Yeah. I'm I don't prospect, but I go on my relationships. That's prospecting. It is, but I'm not just picking up phone calls. I'm not dialing for viewers. If it's wrong, I am I'm a relationship builder, and that's how I prospect. Perfect. That's pro and that is prospecting for sure. But what you've done is you established though a base in your business, which I think a lot, I know a lot of really high producing agents who can't get out of the industry because they never did this. And so they have to dial for dollars every single day if they want to keep up their business, right? So the benefit of learning this skill is what's going to make it so you don't have to work so hard in 10 years, in five years, three years, right? If you do it the right way, okay? Would someone like to read this first paragraph for me? 
empathetic listening is a type of active listening where the listener not only listens to the speaker, but also tries to understand and feel what the speaker is experiencing or feeling. It is a communication technique that allows the listener to connect with the speaker on an emotional level and show that they are genuinely interested in understanding, in understanding the speaker's perspective. The main thing is, and I think for most, most men, and I'm generalizing, it's hard for us to be willing to bring in someone else's emotion and feel them because we can't deal with our own emotions as it is. We don't like it, right? So, but someone who's good at this can do that. People who are empaths, do, do, does everyone know what that means to be an empath? What's your definition? So for me, I feel like I'm an empath to a certain degree. An empath a lot of times can enter a room and sense different people's emotions if they choose to, right? You can focus in on someone and you can, for the most part, like I have a hard time going to movie theaters because if they're crowded, you can feel different things going on. And it makes me sick because I can't turn it on. I can feel, all oh, these people are fighting. This person's not having a good day. This person's really happy. But I'm feeling all these emotions at once. And so it makes it really hard for me to do, be there and focus on the movie. So an empathic person can feel other people's emotions without communicating to them verbally. Absorb the energies of them. Yes. I'm going to read this next paragraph. Go for it. To listening, the listener focuses on the speaker's words, tone, and body language to gain insight into their thoughts and feelings. The listener also seeks to clarify and confirm their understanding of the speaker's message by reflecting back what they heard in their own words. This helps the speaker feel heard and validated, which can foster trust and deeper connections with the relationship. Well, parody. So, I had a mentor who taught me one thing four years ago that changed my business forever. And his analogy he uses is Planet of the Apes. Okay. An ape is meeting with, it's not the gorilla, but the like big wise monkey. And he communicates to the ape that he picks up a stick and he has one stick. He breaks the stick and he's like, one can be broken. And then he grabs a bundle of sticks and he can't break them. But together we're strong. If we can learn to connect and relate with people regularly and feel with them, we're going to keep handing them sticks, right? Making that relationship stronger to a point where it's unbreakable, where loyalty is never questioned, right? <clears throat> Who here has had a family member purchase without them or sell without them? or refer a friend to a different agent who's ever had that happen, had that happen. Would I be in the wrong to tell you to shut up and listen? Right? Were you entering into their life enough to give them enough sticks to create such a strong bond of loyalty that they wouldn't have questioned it? You also feel those some of those people don't want those that are closest to them to know all the personal information. Yeah. I think that's where we see some of our agents are struggling with the relationships within their own families. Some people have such pride they don't want the others in their home or in their mm -hmm. in their square to know all of their financials and all their personal information. For sure. No, I think I think that is something. For sure. But 
if we look at this, just implementing this into our lives in general, do you think over time you could change that though? Trust. Mm -hmm. And how do we build trust? Being that's different. Many different ways to build trust. Mm -hmm. it's, showing, it's showing up. Mm -hmm. It's showing them that you believe in them and giving them the tools to believe in you and showing how do I say this? So it, it, intense. It, yes. Intense is needed yes. to build trust. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of my mentors said, just walk around, everybody you see, imagine they have a sign around their neck that says, help me build a fort today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's one thing it takes from us to build trust. The, those things, but there's something that it's an internal battle for ourselves. What is it for us? For some, it's vulnerability. Okay. I think the people who are trusting you the most see that you've been where they have been at some point mm -hmm. and and know that you've helped someone, but nobody knows because you've kept it within that group and mm -hmm. you're not out sharing it with everybody. Yeah. The word I'm looking for is it takes extreme patience. These are all correct answers, but in order to do that, we have to be patient. Right. It's on their time, not ours. Exactly. And a lot of times, as an agent, we need that closing yesterday. There's a lot of agents like that. We need, I needed that closing last week. And so then they focus on one person who might have kind of told them that they want to do something. And they are not patient. And a lot of times, if that deal goes through, it's not a good, it's not a good transaction for either side. Communication is poor. There's a lot of things that could have been avoided, but they don't get avoided, and they won't refer you business. All right. Someone mind reading the last paragraph for me? Empathetic listening can be particularly helpful in situations where the speaker is experiencing strong emotions or facing a challenging situation. By practicing empathetic listening, the listener can offer support, encouragement, and a safe space for the speaker to express themselves. Again, what we've been saying, this, this can change your business forever right this 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 ability can make it so she says that she doesn't prospect you say you don't prospect but if you ask any of my agents who I coach to do what you do they would complain to me the whole time because they're prospect you know it's not prospecting for you right and realistically, it's because you've made it something more important than prospecting. Okay. How do we be how do we do this? Right? How do we get better at? So these are the seven ways, and there's probably way more ways, but these are seven ways that I've come up with to become a better empathic listener. One is give your full attention to the person who's communicating to you. How many times, so I have a rule. I, so I run a team here. I have a rule with my agents. If I'm teaching a class, they can't have their phone or a computer. They have to have a pen and a paper in front of them. One, I would like the respect because I put something together to coach them. Two, because I want them to listen, right? I want them to retain information. How many of you have gone and shown or showing a house? You pick up your phone. 
How many, how many, how many agents do you think actually do that? I think you'd be very surprised. Yeah. 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 How many times have you picked up the phone while you're doing a consultation? Okay. Change my voice now every day. It says I am out with clients. I'm showing homes. Leave me a text message. I'll get back to you quickly. If you leave a voice now, I'll get back when I'm done. But I change it every day. So I'm not having to think, oh, they think I'm ignoring them or I'm not getting back to them. They know I'm with clients. How many of you guys have one of these? Tattoo? <laughs> how many of you guys have one of these? <laughs> no, how many of you guys have one of these? Apple Watch or Smart Watch? It's linked to your phone. How often do you find yourself looking at your watch without realizing it when you're with a client? That text comes in. Not those Apple Watches. When they first started coming out, I had no idea what they were. And I was with a client and they had their hands. Mm -hmm. And so finally, I had to say, Are you on a time crunch? Do we need to shorten our time together? Or they're like, Well, no, I'm just checking my text. I'm like, Oh, okay. Because it, it was distracting for me, even for them to just keep looking at their text and their watch. I couldn't imagine being a professional doing that. Mm -hmm. I have a beautician that does that while she does my hair. So could you just? Do my hair, I'll pay you, and then you can check your watch 59 times as soon as I do. So I didn't realize I was doing it. And I sat down with Rob a couple of weeks ago, and we we're talking, I, think, I can't remember what we we're talking about, scripts, something. I've sat down with Rob a couple times, so. But he asked me, he's like, oh, are you, are you, or do you need to go somewhere? I'm like, no, I'm good. He's like, okay. And then I realized why he asked me that question. Because I was getting emails on my watch. And it, they would vibrate. And it was just like natural habit. Just like, like I'm programmed to just do this. And so now whenever I meet with people, I put my watch in airplane mode. Because I don't want to look at it. Right? Sometimes I'll even take it off. I've done that once and then I left this on, which is not very good. But... Like sometimes I'll throw it in my car and just leave it there because it, it becomes, it's such a habit that's been ingrained in me without me realizing it, that I didn't realize I was doing it until someone pointed it out to me. Something is very interesting to me. People, people who I respect put me in a very, like I put myself in high awareness situation. And so Probably other people have asked me that, but because I respect Rob so much, I was so confused why he asked me that question. So I was like, wait a second, like, let me figure this out. It's a weird, very interesting question because I didn't realize what I was doing. But we have to realize that there's certain things that we're programmed to be doing, right? Sometimes, again, a lot of times people who are good empathic listeners need to be able to communicate the same way. The only way you can do that is to be able to step back out of yourself and see what you're doing regularly. Right. Sometimes I'll get caught up in things because I want to help so many people because I have this ability to know if something's wrong and I'm not afraid to step in and ask if I can help. Okay. But a lot of times I forget to step out and say, hey, what's wrong with myself? How can I help myself today? And sometimes they don't want to be fixed or heard. Sometimes they just want you to listen and they'll figure it out themselves eventually. Honestly, most of the time is no one wants to be fixed, right? No one, no one wants to be told they're broken. And most of the time we can fix ourselves and that's what it takes, right? We can't. I had a mentor tell me one time, how many people have had an aha moment? Yeah. So what they explained to me was essentially an aha moment is actually a moment that you actually learn something because it's, it gets programmed into your memory 
And that's why you have what people call an aha moment, right? So, but we have to be paying attention to these things, okay? Next one, listening without judgment, which kind of goes along with this. People don't want to be fixed. People don't want to be told how to be better. People don't, they want you to listen, try and understand where they're coming from and help come up with a solution together. A lot of times when I'm coaching people, I, they come to me, they have a problem. I listen to it and I let them get through everything. And I say, what kind of solutions have you come up with? What do you feel? How do you feel you, we can change this situation? How can I help you? Not, hey, so I've done this before. And when this happened to me, this is what I did. And you should do it that way. Right? No one does it. They listen to you and they're like, uh-huh. They leave and they still, they still feel hurt. They still don't know what to do. And then they're going to find someone else to talk to. But the problem is now they're going to carry bitterness with them. Because they came to you for a reason, right? Next one, ask open-ended questions. So I study a lot of scripts. I'm pretty good at this. I say most agents should be pretty good at this and are because we, we do that, right? That's how we discover things. Really good salespeople are good at asking open-ended questions. Discovery is all sales. Sales is just discovery. Right. Okay. Yes. One thing about that, um, and this goes back to when you were asking your kids question. The interesting part about this is a couple months ago, Jen happened to bring this up to me. She said that she was very complimentary saying that I ask a lot of questions and, and I do when I'm here. And she assumed that I did that at home with my kids. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I, Go do this, get this done. Come on, let's get it. And, and when you, you know, the simple thing of, hey, have you cleaned your room or go clean your room? It, she sent me a video about it of how asking questions in the right way, the impact that it, can, that it has on, of course, everybody. And it makes sense for me in the business world. Okay, yeah, of course, you gotta ask questions. That makes perfect sense. And, but the video specifically was also talking about with your children. And I kid you not, I went home and I said, she's right. I don't ask questions to my kids. And the simple thing of, you know, bedtime, everyone's always fighting bedtime and everything like this. So I just, I asked the questions. I said, hey guys, hey, what time is it? Nighttime, okay, well, what time of, at night? It's you know, whatever time it was. What happens at that time? It's bedtime. Okay, what do we need to do before we go to bed? You need to brush your teeth. Have you brushed your teeth? No. Will you go brush your teeth? Okay. Versus go brush your teeth. Oh, come on, dad. I did it. And it was, it was incredible. It was amazing. And I remember I had to go back and tell her, I'm like, thank you. That was actually so helpful and a reminder that what we do at in our workforce, our workplace, we need to transition that into our, our homes well. And it is so effective when we do that. But asking questions is the key thing in everything that we do. 100%. Yeah. I have a client that was extremely rough and tough. I could not match his energy no matter what. And I said, I invite you to tell me about your terrific stepfather and your terrible stepfather. And I just sat back like this and listened for a golden hour. <laughs> and he sold a house and bought a house. He said, because no one has ever listened mm -hmm. to his life experiences. And I was trying to delete the swear words, you know, I was like, <laughs> yeah. but I acted, I call it active listening, not just whatever, just tell me and hurry and get it over with. And it was amazing to me because I got the result I needed. I wanted to sell his house, list it, and then have him buy a house from me too. Yeah. And the thing is, is, as you do these things, it goes back to the stick, right? You're giving them more sticks, 
right? One stick's easily broken. Two, it gets harder. Three, it's harder. You continue to do this, you're going to build this relationship. So four, I like this opposed to repeat and affirm, but reflect back what you heard. What's a reflection? A deflection, a reflection. Is. It's the same thing. We look at ourselves in the mirror. It's a perfect reflection of ourselves, right? Making sure that we're reflecting back what you hear the other person say is one of the strongest things you can do for active when, when you're actively listening to someone. And you don't have to, I've stopped doing this. I think it's a basic sales technique. It's something that we're all taught is repeat and affirm, repeat and affirm, repeat and affirm. And we're repeating verbatim everything they say. Have you ever had your child repeat everything that you say? It is, it is like, oh my gosh, my four-year-old right now. She thinks it's the funniest thing to do to dad. I say something to her. She says it right back. And she's like, uh-huh. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, But if we reflect back, what's also interesting about reflection is you need to reflect back the emotion, the feeling, the situation, right? A lot of times, if you go look in the mirror, if I said, Jen, go look at the mirror, what are you going to look at? Your reflection. How often do you look at what's around you? In the mirror. Yeah. When you look in the mirror, how often do you look around you? A good empathic listener can reflect the entire picture. A lot of times we're sat in front of our clients. And we reflect back to them, right? But not the entire picture they're giving us, okay? So reflect back what you are hearing. Not just empathy. Um, we kind of went over that already. But the, the, I think the easiest way is just imagine yourself in their situation, right? To the best of your knowledge. The only way you can do that is ask open-ended questions, figure out what's going on, and then put yourself in their shoes. How would they be dealing with that? What would they be doing? What would you be doing? Why would you do it that way? Validate their feelings. Right. Yes. Nation, like that's that's something I feel like with my husband, he he would always he's a fixer by nature, and that's super great sometimes. But now he's kind of gotten in the habit because sometimes, well, not more often, I just need a hug. I need to ruminate in those feelings for a minute, and then I can move on. Right. I just need to be validated. Yeah. So it's kind of like now he's gotten in the habit of if I'm having a rough day or something, it's the question is asked: Do you need advice or do you just need validation? Yeah. because it's a better yeah, it really just helps them, you know, because then he's not trying to fix something and I just feel like, well, he's not even in my corner. He's not on my guy for whatever reason. And it can be the same thing with like that video we watched with Bing Bong. He just wanted to ruminate in that sadness for a minute, right? And feel those feelings, feel all the things, and then he could move on. So, and I think it's the same thing with clients too. Like if they've had something happen, either it's, they don't get the home that they want or rates have shifted or something, right? Like mm -hmm. we need to be in that with them and, and it's a valid emotion for them. Right? Sure. Mine says, I have a tool for that. Let me go get it and I'll fix the situation. You can't fix everything. <laughs> uh, well, that's kind of interesting is um, I have a really good relationship with my parents. So I talk to them regularly. And I call my mom when I'm frustrated with something and I'll tell her about it. And then she gets super frustrated and I'm like, trying to figure out why she's frustrated. And then we always end up arguing, getting off the phone. And so this was just like a couple months ago. And obviously I've known my mom for a couple months. So this has been happening our, my entire life. And we'd have these arguments and then we like walk away and we're fine. Like, it's not a big deal. And I asked my mom, I was like, why is it that every time I tell you about something that's frustrating, you get upset? She's like, because I want to fix it. I'm like, I'm not telling you to fix it. 
And so now in turn, I'll call my mom and say, Hey, I just, I'm just going to vent with you. I don't need you to fix this mom, but I want to tell you about something. Then I tell her about it. She validates what I'm saying and we get off the phone and then we move on. So being a good empathic listener, you also need to be a good empathic communicator. The last one is body language. There's lots of really good body language books. Truth and Lies is a really good one. It's, I like that one because the, it's not as much as a scientifically based book as more of an experience book. So it's easier to relate to. Another one is the Ellipsis Manual by Chase Hughes. Um, that one is a very, that is ellipsis. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not even going to try it. It starts with an E. But um, it's by Chase Hughes. Chase Hughes is one of my favorite that I study. Um, he was an interrogator for the United States. And his job was to interrogate terrorists. That was his only job. High, high priority terrorists. His job was to go in, interrogate them, get information from them, right? That's the key part of an interrogator. You have to get information back. And so he created this system of how to use body language to essentially manipulate these terrorists to give them, give him their information. Right. But we need to, the basic foundations of body language is a lot of times if people's people are crossing their arms, they're closed off. Right. That's like nine times out of 10, this is a, I'm closed off to you. Right. Women. So if a man crosses his legs over his knee, He's not listening to you. Just know that. Men are not programmed to do that. Women are. So it's a very different, very different expression, outward expression. If men do that, just know they don't want to listen to you. People point their feet where they want to go. If someone doesn't want to be in a room with you, they're going to sit where their feet are towards the door, some way, somehow. That's why most classroom settings, you walk in, you, your back's to the exit, and you're facing your teacher. It's a subconscious thing. But it's pretty simple. This is closed off. This is open. Right? So when we're listening to someone speak to you, never, never do this when someone's expressing their feelings to you. Because whether they know it or not, their subconscious knows you're not listening. Not all the way. You've already got an answer for them, right? Always try to keep an open posture when communicating with others. And if you're communicating with someone who is doing this, I seriously, I'll meet with buyers and we'll spend about 10 minutes doing this back and forth because their arms are folded. And I'm just, I want them to unfold their arms. I want them to listen. I want them to open up. And then all of a sudden, they open their arms up. And all of a sudden, they're asking me questions and they're listening to what I'm saying. Yep. 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 So, body language. So, to become a better empathic listener, these are seven things that you can put and start practicing in your life. The big thing I coach with my agents is everything I try to coach, I want it to be something. I want to be something that can not just be applied in your business, but in your life. Right? Uh, real estate for me is not my life. I don't want it to be. I want to retire when I'm 35. I want to be done with this. I want to be sitting somewhere with my family. That's what I want. 35 is not even half my lifespan, right? So when I am learning and educating myself, 
I educate myself for my life. So I would just encourage you guys to really look how you can apply this with your relationships, with your friends, your family, your kids, and your business. But honestly, the most important part is your friends and family, right? Because if you can apply it with them, you'll come naturally in your business. And that's what makes it easy to do. So that's it. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay. Well, thanks for coming to sales meeting. You're welcome. <laughs>